With the gentleman yield, I, I appreciate him yielding. Uh, I just want to say that I hope Americans are thinking through the various ramifications, and I think you just made an excellent point. We are talking about trials of terrorists in civilian courts in the biggest city or one of the biggest cities in the nation. <clears throat> you just made a brilliant point. What about the guards and their families, the court clerks and their families, uh, the bailiffs and their families, and on and on and on, all of whom now will be exposed to perhaps uh, pressure, kidnapping, threats. But what about how long will this take? Um, are these trials that can be concluded in weeks? No, I don't think so. You're a judge. Do you think these can, trials can be concluded in months? Or perhaps, as our colleague Mr. Hoekstra pointed out on Face the Nation yesterday, these are trials which, if the defense exploits them as defense attorneys do in courts in America, could go on for months or years, ripping open the wounds of the people whose family members died in those attacks. Why? Why in God's name are we giving terrorists the protection of trials in American criminal justice courts? It is insane. It is absolutely makes no sense. Um, I believe that we are exposing the people of New York, uh, the uh, uh, people involved in these courts and in their security, all for no reason whatsoever. And it won't just go on for a few days or a few weeks or a few months. I'd like to commend uh, to the attention of the listening audience the points that were pointed, made out, uh, pointed out today in today's media. This is going to be a field day for Al Qaeda to learn how America and the American system of intelligence gathers information. And they'll be able to drag it out in open public court rather than in a military tribunal. Somebody explain to me, I wish somebody could explain to me why terrorists deserve the protections of the U.S. Constitution as if they would broken civil laws while they were operating inside this country. Uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was not in the United States when he planned this. This was not a simple murder. This was a terrorist attack by enemy combatants. Um, we may not want to call it war. We may not want to call it a war on terror. We may not want to accept the fact that there are people who hate us, as the quote the gentleman from Texas just read demonstrates, but it's reality. And we ought to be dealing with it as a terrorist threat in the, in the tribunals set up for terrorist threats and for war crimes and crimes committed in the process of combat. There was no mistaking, absolutely no mistaking, what Al-Qaeda wanted to accomplish by these attacks. And they were not done for mere criminal purposes. They were done to terrorize a nation. And we have lost sight of that. And I think this administration has lost sight of it. I think this Attorney General is making a grave, grave mistake. And the damage we have seen in the past when our intelligence community is injured because this kind of information is paid, made public and we are no longer able to operate as an intelligence community protecting a nation against foreign enemies should act, I think, is uh, a risk which we should never be undertaking under these circumstances. I thank the gentleman for yielding. I know his uh, years on the bench as a trial judge watching criminal trials uh, makes it painfully clear that that's a procedure designed to protect defendants accused by the nation of uh, crimes under the laws and statutes of this nation. That's not what we are dealing with here. And I thank the gentleman for making that point. Well, and I, I appreciate uh, for Mr. Shattuck making the point he does about why would we bring them to, uh, to trial here in the United States, especially in New York City, when and there are a lot of people that have never picked up the Constitution. We got a little pocket um, Constitution here, but an Article One that talks about the legislative powers. Over in Section Eight, it says the Congress shall have power to, and you go down to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. So President Bush made a mistake 
when he tried to create tribunals by the executive branch without getting Congress involved, and the Supreme Court rightfully struck that down and said you can't do that because Article I, Section 8 says this is something that Congress must do. So then Congress did that. We had the Military Commissions Act of 2006, and this is the bill. It's been uh, slightly amended here uh, this year, but it still says in Section 948C, persons subject, subject to military commissions, is any alien, unprivileged, enemy, belligerent su is subject to trial by military commission as set forth in this chapter. I'm in the process of drafting legislation right now that uh, we, we'll uh, file this week that will say they must be tried in military commission so we don't have an inexperienced president that doesn't realize the consequences of his well, actions. Gentlemen, yield. Are, you are, are we not in a, uh, a war on terror, in your view? Pardon? Are we not in a war on terror? Uh, some people don't want to call it that, and it may be unilateral at this point, but there is a war using terror going on, and we either fight it or we'll be overwhelmed by it. So we should be in it. Well, yes. and, and my point is that that, has been, that language has been taken out of the vernacular by this administration for whatever reason. For we what have reason? Our, we yeah. have our points as to why, but this is not being viewed as a war. Th what happened by the decision to bring in the mastermind of 9-11 to the very city where 3,000 Americans were murdered, basically it was a signal by this administration that the war on terror is over, that we were no longer going to treat the terrorists as enemies of war, but rather we're going to go back to the Clinton administration years where we're going to treat them as criminal defendants, mm. like Ramsey Youssef, 93 World Trade Center bomber, criminal defendant, not an act of war, but he is a criminal defendant. By the way, Ramsey Youssef did not get the death penalty. And he went and talked to his uncle, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, about flying airplanes into buildings. And, and look what happened. Musawi did not get the death penalty because a lot of evidence was held to be inadmissible in a federal court. If they are true enemies of war, the best venue to try them is, as we did in World War II, by military tribunals. And to the, hold them and the, the rules of evidence, as you know, Judge, yeah. I was a federal prosecutor in the Justice Department. Look, Southern District of New York, U.S. Attorney, one of the finest in the country. But the fact is, you bring them on American soil, give them all rights under the Constitution, as my good friend from Arizona stated. Why does Khalid Sheikh Mohammed get constitutional rights? Well, and that uh, we claim that is a very important point. Why does he get American citizens' rights? He has not been to America. He masterminded this. He was captured overseas in a foreign country. He's in Guantanamo right now. And the Constitution gives us, in Congress, the right to set up a military tribunal commission system, which we did. But I want to come back, and I'm going to keep injecting uh, quotes from Khalid Sheikh Mohammed's own pleading himself. At page 4, he says, in God's book, this is the guy who our president and, and Eric Holder, the attorney general, want to bring to the most densely populated area in America. He said, in God's book, he ordered us to fight you everywhere we find you, even if you were inside the holiest of all holy cities, the mosque in Mecca and the holy city of Mecca, even during sacred months. He said, in God's book, verse 9, al Taba, then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them, and seize them and besiege them and lie in wait for them in each and every ambush. This is the guy they want to yield American citizens' rights to who will and not be able to be— And will, gentlemen, yield that point? I don't, 